Hi everyone, uh, today I wanted to do my top 10 uh, classic books. Um, if you've watched any of my videos, you know how much I like classics, so I thought it was about high time that I did some. So uh, here are my classic books uh, that I enjoyed the best. So the first one is uh, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Uh, this is a story about a girl. She grows up um, just in an abusive household. She goes she is sent to school. This is in the 1800s, and there is just a, she gets into a terrible school, gets more abuse there. She becomes a, a governess for a family, and she ends up falling in love with uh, the the head, the Mr. Rochester, who is head of the family. And uh, it's just the story of uh, what happens there. Uh, when I was younger, I did not like this book, but then I read it again as I was older, and I just loved it. Uh, just uh, the wording and everything. So, uh, yeah, uh, Jane Eyre by uh, Charlotte Bronte. Uh, the next one, uh, it is one that's very near and dear to my heart. Uh, it is uh, Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. And um, uh, this is a story about uh, Jean Valjean, and he is uh, put in prison for stealing food. He gets out on parole, breaks his parole, and he's being pursued by Javert. So just throughout the book, the book takes place over uh, many decades, and just through all, all this time, Javert is trying to find this guy who broke his parole. And it's, there, there's many elements in this book. Um, redemption, forgiveness, uh, it is so good. I've seen several versions of the movie, and they each don't come close to capturing the feel of the book, except the Broadway version. Uh, just the music and the characterizations in the Broadway show are just so good. Um, it's the closest I've seen that comes to the feeling of the book, so very good. So let me throw up by Victor Hugo. Uh, the next one is another good one, uh, The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. This is a story about Edmond Dantes. Um, Kind of like in uh, Les Miserables, he is uh, falsely put in prison, and there he meets a priest, he gets to know him, and um, Edmund Dantes is able to escape um, years later, and uh, when he escapes, he exacts his revenge on the people who put him in prison, and just, you, he kind of sees, like, what happened um, in the years that he had been in prison. So it, it's a very good book. Um, Kind of like with Les Miserables, I heard this book on audio tape um, when, when me and my brothers were little. And me and my brother, we listened to this for like three days straight because it was just so good. And my youngest brother got mad at us because we didn't want to do anything else. He'd want to go outside and play. And we are just like, look, we have to find out what happens. And um, it's there's just adventure and revenge and like what happens next in this story. So it's very, very good. So, Alexander Dumas, The Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, the next two books are books that you probably kind of can figure out that were on my uh, uh, list. It is uh, Pride and Prejudice and Persuasion by Jane Austen. Jane Austen is probably one of my favorite authors. Um, so that's why she kind of turns up twice in this list. Um, Pride and Prejudice is a classic story. Uh, Elizabeth Bennet. She meets Mr. Darcy. He says some unflattering things about her. She doesn't like him. And just uh, how they interact. And um, just kind of a family story. Her mom wants her to get her and her sisters to get married. She's trying to marry them off. And Mr. Darcy is rich, so she's like, hey. Anyway, uh, this is a funny book, a classic. So if you have not read Pride and Prejudice, I say go and read it by Jane Austen. Uh, the next book is uh, Persuasion by Jane Austen. This is a story of Anne Elliot. She, uh, years before the book starts, she was engaged to Captain Wentworth, um, but her family persuades her to break off the engagement, and she does. And then Captain Wentworth comes back years later um, to her to her town, and it's kind of like, okay, does he still like me? Do I still like him? How do we interact? Um, it's been years since we've had a relationship. Uh, and it's, I believe, one of the last books that Jane Austen completed, um, and it's one of my, it's probably one of my favorites. Uh, Pride and Prejudice and 
uh, persuasion are two ones that uh, are hard for me to decide which one I like better. Um, it's, I think this month it was the 200th anniversary of Jane Austen's death, and I just wish that she would have been able to complete some more books, because um, they're, they're really good. Uh, the next ones I've talked about, uh, so the first five are like definitely my five, and these next five ones are the ones that just, they're so good that I had to do a top ten instead of a top five. <laughs> um, the first one is The Scarlet Pimpernel by um, Baroness Imushka Orzi. Uh, this is a story of a girl named Marguerite. She is married to this guy named Sir Percy Blakeney, and... Um, uh, this takes place kind of in the French Revolution. She's French, but they moved to England, and she's and there's this Scarlet Pimpernel who's helping the French aristocrats being saved from the guillotine. And then she starts noticing these strange things happening with her husband. He's grown distant. He kind of leaves every time the Scarlet Pimpernel comes, is doing his one of his adventures, and one of her old friends from France, Chauvelin, um, kind of blackmails her into uh, giving him the identity of the Scarlet Pimpernel. So this is this is a really good book. Um, the character of Sir Percy is hilarious. It's really funny and um, uh, it's really good. So The Scarlet Pimpernel by Baroness Mushka uh, The next one I will talk about is another one that kind of is in the French Revolution uh, era is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, and uh, this is a story of a girl named Lucy Minette. Her, um, she travels to France because uh, they found her long-lost father. She comes back with him, and she meets um, a guy in the boat. His name is Charles Darnay, and uh, they fall in love, and when he gets to England, he's accused of being a French spy, so he goes to court, but one of the lawyers, his name is Sidney Carton, looks a lot like him, and they were able to prove that he wasn't a French spy. So it's kind of like the love triangle between actually Lucy and Charles Darnay and Sidney Carton, the lawyer. And it's just a really good book on what happens to this family and how uh, both their ties to England and France. Uh, so it's very good. Uh, one thing I do like about classic literature, and I might have to do a video on this, is just the great opening lines of classic books. I mean, you have Pride and Prejudice, but there's a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. And then you have like A Tale of Two Cities, where it's, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. You have like Moby and Dick, where it's, call me Ishmael. So I might have to do a, a video on that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the next book. Uh, Bram Stoker's uh, Dracula. Uh, this is a story, one thing that I actually am very surprised that I liked. So this is like the first vampire book. And the one thing I like about it is that it's told like in diary form, in newspaper form. And it's uh, just all these things start happening in the city. And uh, it's people trying to figure out what that is, people getting sick and just weird marks appearing on people, um, and uh, I was reading the Twilight books and I, was, I told my brother, oh, I'm reading a vampire book, and he was, he was like, no, those are not vampire books, this is a vampire book, and he went and got me this, so I had to, I had to read it. Uh, the next book is Anna Karina by Leo Tolstoy. This is another book that I was surprised that I liked. It took me like three, four months, five months to finish because it's so long. It's like almost a thousand pages. Um, this is the story of Anna Karina, and she uh, she's married, but then she starts falling for this uh, this other army guy. And one thing uh, that I like about this story is that not only does it follow her um, and her love triangle. But it also follows other people, and you see people from different walks of life, and just the romances and struggles of uh, them. Uh, I was very proud that I finished this book, and one of the books that I kind of want to read um, 
later on is War and Peace. Uh, so, Anna Karina, the little Tolstoy. And the last book is one that has a lot of popularity just in modern culture, and it is Sherlock Holmes. Uh, I love mysteries, and I think my love of mysteries started with Sherlock Holmes. Um, I remember vividly my um, dad reading to me and my brothers in front of the fire. He had his robe, and we're just like listening to these mystery stories. Um, this is so he is the um, Sherlock Holmes is like the epitome of detectives. Uh, he has just great deductive powers, and he does all these. Um, cases with his friend, his best friend, John Watson, and so usually the Sherlock Holmes books will be given into two books, and so you can kind of see each place where they have different mysteries. Um, some of my favorite are um, The Adventure of the Speckled Band, The Red-Headed League, um, uh, there's the famous ones like The Final Problem, where he battles Professor Moriarty, so classic. If you like mysteries, you have to read this one, and if not, uh, just for the characters of Sherlock Holmes and John Watson. So, there's that. Anyway, those are my top ten uh, classic books that you should read. Uh, tell me which ones are your favorite classic books. Uh, there's, I still have like a whole stack of classic books that I would like to read. Uh, but let me know which one's your favorite. I hope you like this video. Like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks! Bye!